Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. Elon Paul here. So we're doing the world's playthrough here, and the next episode that you're seeing here is going to be um, a little bit chopped up. Apparently, my computer decided to update in the middle of my last recording. I was a half hour into the episode, and suddenly my computer just decided, hey, I feel like updating right now, and completely shut down everything, and I lost my recording. So... To catch you up, I've completed a couple more of the scientist missions, um, noting that the scientist is a little bit out of his mind right now, the Corvax that is, and he is uh, kind of losing control of reality as he's trying to get certain items in my base to talk to one another. So as you're going to see, we're going to talk to him here and continue on our discussion with the scientist and then move on to other missions. So let's pick up where we left, where I left off, and you lost, and you lost a little bit of time on this. So unfortunately, here's where we are. What I have done is there's a planet now out there that has another base on it. It is right there, a uranium base alpha. It is a particular planet in the system here that is so far away, it made it necessary for me to create a new base over there. Very simple, a base computer, a teleporter, and something to recharge the teleporter when I need it. That's about it. Nothing else. And we can get uranium there anytime we want. Other than that, let's continue. Do you have the data, Traveler? My child cannot see the world as you see it. To share your scans would be to share your consciousness with them. It is a tremendous gift. So we're going to hand in the data we have. You, what sights? By way of thanks, my child has prepared you a blueprint. They've learned how to make unstable gel. They hope it makes you happy. So we have that formula now. Traveler, this data has raised a concern. As a beacon, my child could receive signals from unknown sources all across the galaxy. I will be unable to protect them from the unsavory thoughts of the GEC or the harsh scans of the Sentinels. If you find ion batteries, I will prepare polyfiber blueprints and we shall weave them a protective cloak. Accept. Do not delay, Traveler. Their young mind is very impressionable. So basically we're pretending, protecting them from the internet. That's what we're saying here. Isn't that funny? So we're going to return to the scientist here. He just popped back up because we got plenty of batteries in our inventory. Have you found the ion batteries, Traveler? The Corvax looks anxious. Their disconnection from the convergence and their anxiety for their child is taking its toll. Perhaps the batteries will help them settle. Give the ion batteries. Thank you, Traveler. It is good we can protect their little, be little beacon, but I fear it may not be enough. You should take a copy of the polyfiber plants. They may be of some use to you. Now please, give me some time to educate my child. So there we go. We can make polyfiber out of 100 cactus flesh and 200 star bulb. It is a necessary item to build certain cosmetic items on your bases. So keep that in mind. All right. And we can return. You see, it gives us an hour and a half to do something here. So if we return to them, it says you cannot hurry these things, traveler. The bond between family components must be forged correctly. That's it. So the timer is now started. It will take an hour and a half before they're ready to, for the next step. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the expanding the base, and we're going to talk to the Overseer. But before we do, as a precaution, I'm going to hit my little save beacon we made during the half hour that you lost. And we'll head back to the Overseer. Things are aligning. We are now we are ready now for a Gek Farmer to join us. Indeed, I have already prepared their contract. All you need to do is gather the selenium required to finalize their workstation. Attendant Nalik grows in confidence and seeks again to expand my home. I find it hard to disagree with them, for a farmer would open up a world of possibilities. The Overseer needs selenium to complete the agricultural terminals plants. Selenium grows on scorched planets and requires hazmat gauntlets to harvest. Except, Selenium is not easy to acquire in the wild, but this only proves the value of recruiting a farmer. Okay, so we have to gather selenium. So to do so, we need hazmat gauntlets. Strange part is, is, I don't think we ever required. Oh, we did get them. Look at that. So let's go over here. We're going to put hazmat gauntlets in. We need sodium nitrate. So we'll do the chromatic metal right now, but we need 16 more sodium nitrate. So let me see here. My refiner, I've got ferrite dust in there. Let me go ahead and make. Do we have sodium? I think we do. There we go. So we need 16. So we'll need 32 sodium to complete what we're looking for. There we go. All right. 
So we got 16 being made right now. That's it. All right. So now we can go back in here. And we now have hazmat gauntlets. So now we can pick up certain types of plants and stuff like that. So before we go anywhere, let's go to our storage container. And we're going to drop in the bolt caster package because we don't need it. I'm going to start hanging on to these things as I start coming across them. Uh, like these Viking effigies and stuff like that. Uh, let me see. This is food that's very expensive. Nothing special. I'll put it in here anyway. We're going to hang on to these in case we decide to duplicate them. Okay. Done here. By the way, we did get plans for our... Uh, let's see here. There, storage container zero. So we can finally put this in here. We need 35 magnetized ferrite. I'm going to go ahead and just build it real quick. So we need 70 pure. All right. We got 81. Hold on a second. Oh, we need 35 total. Okay, so we need 26. My bad. Because we want to free up some inventory. See? So this way we're using things efficiently. We won't keep any extra on us for now. Okay. Go ahead and make it. And it should fit. I hope right here. No. I didn't make enough room. Alright. So we'll put it right next to it right here. And now we have access to a second storage container. Okay, good deal. We're all done. So we have the hazmat gauntlets. We need to go somewhere and get something, right? We need... We need selenium, right? Scorched worlds. Yes, yes, of course. So do we have a planet here that will get us what we're looking for? Okay. It says to scan from space, so let's take a look. I don't think we have to leave our system. I think we're pretty much good. So let's just get out a little ways. Slow down. All right, we're going to check in here real quick. So we do know some planets. So this is the one I'd like to put another base on. Uh, cactus flesh. We're looking for something that has selenium. Fungal mold. That's my grassy planet. So we got two more planets here. So let's check them out. Let's see what we got. Uh, so we look at our radar and you'll see that there is two planets here that we haven't scanned yet. Let's get past this a little bit because I can't pick them up. Alright, there we go. So that's a Sporo planet. We already know that one, I believe, right? We've been there. Yeah, Acrid. Okay, Arid. That's a rocky planet. That's the nuclear one. There should be one more beyond the one that we're at here. There's that one. I don't think it's it, but we'll check. Airless. Okay, so none of these planets will actually suit us at all. Very interesting. So we need to go somewhere else, it looks like. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do a free explore here. So we just need to find a new system that has a hot planet at it. Um, we're not going to get too much here. We need to, uh, what we're looking for is looking for a system that has a lot of planets. So this one has a lot. Let's go ahead and check it out. It's pretty close by. It's a Gex system, water, F3. Probably not going to find any paradise planets here. So let's look for something that has some hot planets. That we can find some selenium. Now indeed, one of the other systems we've already been to might work for us. Didn't think of that. We probably could have done a quick search and look for another system, but finding new worlds is very interesting. New systems to go to is very good. Ah, okay. Pirate battle. <laughs> so, we're going to have a couple guys here. We have another ship very close by. 
It's attacking us. Right there. more ships right here. Try not to hit any of the freighters. We got another one like right here. Got him. Okay. Trying not to hit him because he was flying with the freighter right behind him. So we gotta be careful we don't hit him or we hit friendly ships. Right there. Good, gone. Looks like we got one or two ships over here. They were headed right at me. Got a few of them, actually. Looks like more than two. Get from flying right in front of me, man. Oh, nope, that's it. Alright. So now we're gonna get a calm. Friend is, friend who get crew is. Okay, that's all we got out of that. Life form, who must be the captain of this freighter, looks greatly relieved. They gesture as if to welcome me aboard their vessel. So we have the possibility of getting ourselves a freighter here if we wish, especially if it's one we like. Um, it's a halfway decent looking freighter. I do kind of like these ones. Let's take a look at it. That's eh, kind of nice looking. It's not really my cup of tea, but you know, honestly, if it turns out to be an S-Class freighter, let's check it out. At the very least, we're going to get some nice rewards out of this. So. Let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, looking for the orange one. There it is. Okay. Mander. Yep. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Don't understand anything he's saying. It's in Gak. The small creature chatters excitedly and hops from one foot to the other. Gesturing wildly around the bridge, they point towards the control panel of their freighter. They seem to be suggesting I take command. Let's inspect it. Okay, it's a C-Class. There's really nothing special about this. So, yeah, no. So I'm going to go back into the conversation one more time. And we're going to go ahead and request payment instead. That's going to give us cargo bulkhead. Increase standing with the GEC by 2. 235 nanites. And looks like all the gold they had. 371. So, there we go. So, we got stuff. Okay, we want to check out some worlds now. Alright, let's see what we got out here. Got a few planets. I'm going to check this one first. Metallurgic. It's the one that I popped up right next to. Windswept. Yep, nothing there. There's a planet over the eastern, western, whatever edge of the planet over here. I can't see it. Should be a few more. There's one. Two. Boggy. That's not going to help us. Looking for something that has selenium. Nope. Alright. So, we got to check out that one planet over the edge here. Let's check it. Uh, looks like it's revealed. It's got a reddish hue to it, so that might be promising here. Selenium, congratulations. It's right there. Not too far out. And we'll gather as much selenium as we can while we're here. Now, as you know, I think we picked up some items from some of uh, the traders at one point. I'm not even sure if I picked up selenium, to be honest with you. It's been too long since I remember it happening. Now, normally I'd go to the day side of a planet, but selenium is easier to find on the dark side of the planet. I'm not saying it's more prevalent over there, I'm just mean, meaning it's easier to spot, because it has a glow to it. 
So we're just going to stick to the dark side of the planet for now. Okay. There we go. Straight at it. Fortunately, no storms are going on right now. Alright. And you're looking for croppings of plants that stick up from the ground that have a glow to them. Not like these little dots that you see here and there that's like sodium and stuff like that. That looks like a uh, sodium patch. That's nice. I'm going to start heading in a direction. That sounds weird to say it that way, but I'm going to head north. That's what I mean, a compass direction. We'll see what we can find. We don't want to fly too fast at first because procedural, procedural generation takes a couple of moments to pop up. So I want to just fly a little bit more careful here. And I'm scanning like crazy with my eyes, so there may be some periods of silence while I'm flying. What is that? There it is. A little cropping of it right there. And I hear it in a tree. Great. Alright, so we have our hazmat gauntlets. As much of this up as possible. Because we got a whole cropping here, we might as well grab it all. There's a vine in there, I didn't barely see it. Alright, some more plants over here. One down in there. Even the little plants. Go ahead and grab everything. Because the more you have to work with, the more you can duplicate the crap out of everything. Yeah, sodium. I'll grab it. And to use up some, as you know. And yes, even the oxygen from the hazardous plant. I'll grab that too. Okay, is that everything? Oh, one more. Alright, there we go. Alright. How much did we end up with? 577. Very good. Very good. Okay. So we're done with this. We shouldn't have to come back here anymore. Now, a couple of different ways we can get home. We can either hyperspace or we can hit the space station. I am going to go use hyperspace. Because it's a little quicker. And look for your base there as a star as well, indicating this is your main base. A little uh, gear indicates that that's where your mission is located as well, your main mission. Now the gear indicates the Gek that you're talking to, so your Gek Overseer. far away is that? Pretty far. I'm going to save maybe a little bit of time, and I'm going to hit the portal here. Oh, of course it's going to be it's putting me in the space station at the furthest parking space, so even less of an effect of saving time, but that's okay. There we go. Alpha base, warp away. All right, so we'll be getting to our base just a little bit, I hope, quicker, but not by a whole heck of a lot. Already got the sound that we're inside. There we go. 
Okay, and we're back. Real quick, I'm going to hit the save beacon. Because I'm running into problems with this, so why not? Attendant Mallet. It is good to see you, friend. I trust the Viking's technology kept you safe? Yes, it did. I have the selenium required to finish the plans for the farmer's workstation. It will be interesting to see what effect a second gek will have on my overseer. I cannot imagine they have spent much time conversing with the scientist of the armor. So we'll give the selenium. Ah, to farm. We shall exploit the earth, free at last from the sentinels, and practice the glory of trade. And there it is, agricultural terminal. We need chromatic metal, condensed carbon, we have both. Once you have secured our farmer, you will want to trade unhindered to profit from our glorious harvest without being dragged to and fro. Never fear, friend, for I shall make it so. All I require are a few circuit boards to finish the plans for a trade terminal of our own. The Overseer requests circuit boards in order to create a galactic trade terminal blueprint. Corvax scientists should be able to provide the necessary parts. Except, I do not have the zeal for trade that seems to seize the keck. Never nevertheless, nonetheless, nonetheless, it would be convenient to tap into the galactic market from right here at my home. And there we go. So we should be able to create a terminal. I am going to put it over here. I have a reason for doing so. So we jump down here. There's our agricultural terminal. We'll make that right here. Now, while we're at it, what I'm going to do, too, is I'm going to delete that opening. Uh, delete that wall in our base, and I'm going to put a door in. You're probably wondering why. Is because, at some point, we need to... When we go back to our log here, you go to Ghosts in the Machine. It's telling me to build a cylindrical room for my base. So, I'm going to do that right here. And this is where the farmer is going to have all the crops and stuff like that. We're going to start with that. Now, to do so, what I want to do is I'm going to build up just a touch here. Let's build out a little bit. And I need to build it in such a way that it will work here. You see, so this is it. It requires pure ferrite, quite a bit of it. So let's go ahead and get that started. 250 of it we need. a little bit. There we go. There we go. We'll get that started. It takes less than a minute to build that. Um, and then we need to make, we need to get circuit boards, right? So in order to get circuit boards, I don't know if we make those yet. I don't recall if we have the recipe. Processors? We do not. To get a circuit board, unfortunately, we require our scientist. So we're going to have to complete the scientist missions before we can go further. So let's finish building this. We're not going to go for our farmer yet. We have to build all this up first before we can do so. So we will do that here. We need 250. Yeah, we already got 300 in there. Now we'll just give it a few more moments. We'll take it all. since it's almost finished. There we go. Okay, we now have enough pure ferrite to get things going here. I'm going to save one more time because of the fear of everything that I've lost before. Cylindrical room. So it's trying to attach it to things, and I'm trying to get it to not do that. I'm going to put it right here. And I should be able to put a door in it anyway. I have to put the snap back on. There we go. There's our door. Now, I can't quite walk. Oh, I can walk up inside. Good. Okay, so the cylindrical room is done. We're going to wire it in with the rest of the base real quick because it requires power. So there we go, right? Now, we have power to it right now. One thing I want to do real quick is we're going to check our power consumption and we see that we're still at full power so that's good uh, we are using 40 okay and 100 is available all right excellent so we should be fine all right good so we have that available for us as well for when we start building plants and things like that uh let's see so that is done it says to return to space to contact apollo uh, because we've now expanded our base enough that would suffice but how far do we want to go here? That's the thing. 
So let's check our base computer archives. We're going to round out this episode and do a couple extra things here. Recovered archive encrypted. Put recover pass key. So you're just basically choosing between three different words to give them a pass key. I'm just going to keep choosing. Unlocked with the word the. Data recovered 15%. Archives. My access suit has directed me to a crashed starship. Something controls bzz, controls react to my touch, and I can only assume it belongs to me. Bzz, no memory of it, no sense of it before. Additional data available. Construction locks recovered. Blueprints reassembled and prepared for download. So we'll go ahead and get that. Exosuit technology data extracted. Downloading plans. Personal upgrade module synthesized from data scraps. Okay. Beginning de defragmentation of next segment. Leave. So we have a shield module that we can add if we wish. Did we actually get it? Oh, we did get it. Okay. Well, uh, let's see. Put you over here. 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 Doesn't seem to make a difference. I don't seem to be able to make a difference where I put it, so I'm going to just put it up here near the water, and we'll keep it there for now. That's just extra core health is what it's giving us, so that's nice. Um, we do need to put our selenium away, by the way. Let's go back to our computer archive, and we're just going to conti continue doing this, see how far we can get. Okay, friend unlocked it. Same message, about 27%. Next archive, I glance back toward the wreck of my ship, nothing more than a dot. Walking this plane for hours, yet the mountains seem no closer. I look up to the sky. Additional data recovered. Okay, good. Construction data. More exosuit. Personal upgrade module. Uh, the fragmentation of the next one. So what did we get? We got another shield module. Okay. I'll put it in here for now. What does that give me? Another shield strength and core health this time. So that's nice. And we're just going to keep going. See how far we can get with this. No? Base computer archives? Alright. Doesn't seem to let me go any further. So it looks like we've gone as far as we can get here. Alright. Or far, as far as it will let me get. So we've caught up on that one as well. Um, let's see, what else do we have to do here? I think we're kind of at a standstill at this point. We could do a Rebel Star, we could do community research and do some stuff on that. Exploration data. Uh, Ghost in the Machine tells us to contact Apollo. Scientist is not ready yet. And we can't get anything, we can't get the circuit board until we get to the scientist. So I think we're at an end of what we can do here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let's check out our inventory over here real quick, uh, right here. So, do we have selenium in here? I don't think we do. Nope, we do not. Okay, we got a ton of selenium, and we have other items in here too, including marrow bulbs, fungal mold, gamma root, and cactus flesh, and also frost crystals, so we're in good shape here. You can rearrange the things in your inventory to put them all together if you wish. There we go. Uh, let's see. Anything else in here I can use? Alright, good. Good. Got a couple of the walker brains. Geodesite. Okay, good. What's this? Starship AI valves for 144 million each. Look at that. Look how much we have. We already have 200 million right now, and that's worth almost as much as, much as the money I have in my inventory. Go figure. So we can sell these two off and get rid of them. That'll give us a little bit more money, uh, which is our once useful springs and handful of cogs. Let's go ahead and put our cargo bulkhead upgraded here. Because we don't need that. Alright, and can we put this in our ship? Again. So that's our salvage data we just put in there. Oh, this is stuff I picked up for my battle. Positron ejector. Defense chit so we can call in help if we need to. We got a repair kit. That is awesome. You know what we should do? We should just exploit that incredibly and carry them on our ship. 
So next time we have, you know, when we go through the center of the galaxy, we can repair everything. That'll be fantastic. Uh, I don't really particularly care for the positron ejector anymore. I used to use it all the time early on, but now I'm more of an infra knife accelerator guy. So, uh, Gek Relic. Okay, we need to put that away in our main inventory. The Resonator. I'll keep the Tritium for now. I don't think it'll hurt. Uh, Echo Locator will hang on to. We have a little bit of chromatic metal. We don't have a lot. How much copper do we have? Uh, 870. We should really get more. So I'm going to go ahead and make more, I think. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea, don't you? All right. Yeah, let's do that. We've got plenty of upgrades in our inventory on our ship. All right. Gold and silver, present. Copper, good. We've got pirate transponders. We're really building them up. They're worth quite a bit, but boy, you can do a lot more with them than you think. All right, let's go ahead and put down a portable refiner. We're going to duplicate the repair kit real quick here. We only have one others of these, so that'll just make us two of them. But we're just going to keep doubling at this point. It went into my inventory instead. There it is. Very handy item to have, let me tell you. Because it takes the place of anything that needs repairing. Like if you need like 50 ferrite to fix something and you don't have the ferrite on you, you can use a repair kit. It only got, gave me two back that time. Again, the problems we run into. Yeah, four now. There it is. I figure we'll make a whole crap ton. Let's make at least, at least a stack of them. Because you're going to get to a point where you'll have complete stacks, and there we go, eight. Give me eight again. Okay, that's all right. I know, this is the boring part, right? That's not what I was trying to do. There we go. Did we get 16 out of it? Yes, we did. Let's make a couple more, shall we? Thirty-two. I'm gonna keep going because I can. Oh, went too far. There it is. Twenty of them. And now we can make forty more. Okay. And we only got twenty back. All right. Let's do it one more time so we can get our forty because I want to keep at least fifty of them in my inventory. And then we'll be done with that. And then we're going to go ahead and make some more chromatic metal. There we go, 40. We ought to duplicate our chromatic metal at some point, too. So let's take the 434. And we'll make that. I mean, the first time you have to make things, you might as well just make them. In this case, maybe. But while we're here, we'll go ahead and duplicate a little bit of this, too. At this point, we're probably wondering why we're keeping the uh, small refiner over here. Miles will grab it too, so now we have a third one. Let's wait for this to get going, then we're going to duplicate that too. We'll go from there. And we're almost done with this. So this will be a shorter episode, of course. Because I'm not going to wait the hour for the scientists to finish up. So we'll do that in the next episode and we'll check that out. Sorry we lost so much at the very beginning there. Um, <clears throat> nothing like a computer deciding it needs to update right that moment. 
<clears throat> so um, what it basically happened is I had it scheduled to, to update in the evening earlier. And then I started noticing weird things starting to happen in the game that should have given me the clue because the scientist, I went through the, uh, the whole session with him and talked to him and then all of a sudden I noticed he wasn't giving me a timer indicating there was an hour and a half to go. And I should have noticed that and I didn't. I should have seen that as a sign is what I mean. I saw it and I was like, well, that's weird. That's what I was thinking, but unfortunately, yeah. So let's make a little bit more chromatic metal and see we got three of these now. There we go, 831. See? See how that works? Got 1,048 total now. And we're going to go ahead and make it to 3,000. There we go. So that should give us enough to go by, right? So we got 3,000 chromatic metal. I'm going to go ahead and put that in my starship right now. We'll put these refiners in my starship as well as the repair kits. We do need... Yes, I don't know. Should we hang on to the magnetic resonator? And the relic? Yeah, we probably should, I guess. Yeah. Let me put the pure ferrite over there. Cobalt down there. Actually, we can line these all up up here now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop these down here. All right, so what we got now is on the top where we have oxygen on the top left, and we have uh, carbon with condensed below it, ferrite on the next slot with ferrite, pure ferrite below it, and we can put magnetized below that. Silicate powder, then we move our way across from left to right, sodium, dihydrogen, cobalt. So that keeps our items up there. And the bottom most row, we're going to keep our main items that I always usually keep down here that I use on a regular basis, like the ammunition, the plasma, unstable plasma, life support gels, navigation data, and ion batteries. I always try to keep the things I'm selling in the slots over here on the left, a little lower down. So, and we can update all these real quick. This is just... I'm just going to get my hazard protections all updated. Good. Starship, how's it look? Okay. Everything looks okay. The anti-gravity well could use a boost. Let me go ahead and put the radiant shard in there. Get it up. All right. Good. So we're all set. Let's go ahead and put this in our inventory over here. Crew container. We're going to drop our magnetic resonator and our geck relics in there. Um, we should probably put a stack of hair kits in there too and I'll keep some on me there we go that looks okay and we're going to sell the positron of the space station so it's always a good time every now and then when you have the time to do so uh, store things up get things ready to go you know move things around start organizing your inventory because you really kind of need to do that over time you know there's things in here you're going to need over time. You'd be like, oh, man, I don't have the resources to build this. And all of a sudden, you check your cargo container. You're like, oh, hey, look, I got smart at one point. What do you know? All right. So we've got a lot of items in here that we... You're, you're kind of very curious about why we even have them. But they're here in case we need them. All right. That looks good. Let's hit the space terminal up above real quick. And we're going to be rounding this out just in a moment here. Uh, we're going to go to the space station, current system. Warp, and it should take me there almost immediately. There we go. Straight ahead. Hit our galactic trade terminal. We're going to sell off the useful springs, the handful of cogs. And that's it for the inventory there. Um, let's hit the... Exosuit vendor. We don't have any upgrades available in there right now, and I'm not really worried about it. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and sell first our Positron module. That'll give us more nanites. And we're going to buy... Do they have anything we can buy? What upgrades do we not have? So you've got toxic, thermal, both thermals, and then radiation, right? And water. Okay, I think that's all we needed. So we've got all that, right? we got toxic radiation, both thermals, and the water. Okay, yeah, we're all set. Not to worry about any of that, so we're good there, too. 
Um, what about our multi-tool? Ah, still damaged. I need to get crystallized hearts. That's something I need to do at some point. Um, we need to go to a dissonant world and pick a fight, I guess, is basically what I'm talking about doing here. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to do that yet because my damage potential is not really that great. So, we need a better class of multi-tool is what it is. So we'll have to do that at some point or another. Uh, we do have plasma launchers, though. That's cool. And a paralysis mortar. Hmm. Something to think about. We'll have to do that on a further episode. I think that's going to be coming here soon. Do we need any ship upgrades? I don't think we really need anything. I'll take a look. We're looking for S-Class, like the photon cannon. That could be very handy. Because that's what we're using right now. Let's go ahead and grab it. We got the nanites for it right now, so let's do that. Let's see, so the guns are down there. And that should provide a little more damage. 80, 8527 it says, let me see. 8160. 8160, okay, so putting it over here is best. Got it. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these around a little bit. This should give us the same boost, but at least enough room above our sentinel cannon to give it more charge some point. So like 8527 if I put it here, does it make any difference? No, it doesn't. So, but still, I'll leave it there for now. Good deal. Alright. So it gives me a little more damage output for my uh, ship. Alright. So we're good to go. Let's go ahead and take it back to our base, because that's where we're going to start our next episode. On our way. So again, this is going to be a shorter episode. I know the last one was quite a bit longer. So we'll even it out by making this one a little bit shorter. And there we go. Okay. So again, we're going to be hitting the scientist up on the next episode and try to finish out those, those episodes, and we'll go from there. All right. I think that should do it, folks. Um... That's it for me. I'm going to go ahead and call it here. So thank you again for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care, everybody. And remember, always be kind.